So next up is LoRaWAN device management. And uh, we're going to launch something very cool, and we made a, a video for that. Building hardware is hard. And therefore, building an Internet of Things end-to-end -end solution is hard. The history of computing shows that every time we put an abstraction layer on top of hardware, adoption of the hardware platform gets accelerated. Like the operating systems for the first computers, app stores for smartphones, and cloud management platforms for data centers. We can apply this concept to the Internet of Things, creating IoT devices that can be programmed with apps to serve specific use cases, yet leaving the hardware untouched. We present the Generic Node Sensor Edition, a LoRaWAN device packed with sensors and loads of features, capable of supporting several use cases with a single device and just one single supply chain. Available as an off-the-shelf product or as a boilerplate for LoRaWAN sensor development for device makers. Whether you want to build an application for cold chain, retail, smart building, smart city, agriculture, or smart offices, you can build that app with the generic node development tools. The app is provisioned remotely over LoRaWAN on deployment through simple messages or firmware updates over the air and while the device is already in the field. This means that from production all the way to installation, it is the same device. This brings immense economies of scale advantages, which allows device makers to bring their product faster to the market with complete feature sets. At the core of this generic node sensor edition, you can find the ST Micro's STM32WL, the LoRa radio, and a MCU packed in one system on a chip. The onboard sensors and peripherals can measure temperature and humidity, while the accelerometer detects the smallest of the movements and vibrations with high accuracy. Along with that, there is also a buzzer which provides auditory feedback and an external flash for data logging and making it ready for firmware updates over the air. Security is embedded through a secure enclave, allowing it to join any LoRaWAN network in the world that supports the latest specifications set by the LoRa Alliance. Using the state-of-the-art BuckBoost technology, a wider input range, a higher efficiency, and a battery agnostic operation are guaranteed. It brings everything you expect from a solid LoRaWAN sensor node, long range and longevity on two standard AA batteries. This product enables you to start building IoT solutions without the complexity and risk of hardware engineering and lets you focus on the software that makes the product unique. Get it now. So we created this product because we wanted to make sure that the cost of developing a LoRaWAN um, uh, 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 device way, way cheaper. So reduce the non-recurring engineering cost, uh, reduce the feedback loops, uh, because there's already a lot of R&D uh, inside of this boilerplate, and also to give you a quick start with great IDEs that just makes you uh, build a Hello World application in, uh, in literally in an hour. So uh, let's get in the device. Um, so here it is. Isn't it, uh, a, isn't it a beauty, Johan? Finally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, what you see here at the heart of the device is the STM32WL by uh, ST Microelectronics. And we have Benjamin here in the studio that uh, will tell all about it. Hi everyone and uh, hi Vink and Johan. Thank you very much for having ST Microelectronics again this year. By the way, this is a very nice virtual stage and a very cool virtual show, so good job to you guys. Well, uh, last year I physically came to Amsterdam to introduce the first version of STM32WL series, which is a single core version 
based on ARM Cortex M4. And this year, I virtually come here to talk about the latest version of STM32WL, which is a dual core version based on ARM Cortex M4 and ARM Cortex M0 Plus, bringing advanced security features, which I will have the pleasure to detail during my keynote. I will also talk about the whole ecosystem offer coming with STM32WL, and all of you need to know that everything is currently available on the market. Then I will seize the opportunity to showcase concrete examples of devices uh, involving STM32WL, such as the magnificent generic node that was just announced by Vinke and Johan, of course. Uh, so to all of you uh, attending this virtual show, we really look forward to seeing you during ST's keynote. We will also have workshop hosted by ST's experts, and we hope to meet you on our virtual booth where a live video Q&A session will take place. By the way, you will have a chance there to uh, get a free SCN32 WL Nucleo board, so we are really waiting for you there. In the meantime, uh, enjoy the show and uh, see you very soon. That's cool. So check out uh, Benjamin's, uh, Benjamin's talk. So that's the MCU and the LoRa chip. Um, what you see here on the top uh, is a, a red component. It's a virtual antenna by Fructus Antennas, and they have a very interesting system. Uh, uh, and we have Jaap here to tell you all about it. It was great working with the TTN team early on during the system design, as we were able to simulate the antenna performance from the get-go. As you can see here, this red virtual antenna is a standard component that ensures an optimal antenna performance at a fraction of the cost compared to custom design. More importantly, we were able to detect design issues early on, which enabled your team to optimize even before the prototyping stage. Frankly, this is critical to many device makers, as they cannot afford to go through endless design revisions. During the last couple of years, I've seen too many poor performing products and then the data from the edge simply does never end up in the cloud. You have to start thinking about antennas like tires on a Formula One car. You can never win the race with the wrong tires. I'm sure there's a lot more to be said, so if interested, come to our virtual booth and we will explain in detail. For now, back to Inke. So, so very interesting, both a product and, uh, and a service. So let's, uh, let's jump to the, the sensors that are uh, on, the, on the device. So what you see here is that we uh, both have a temperature humidity uh, sensors by Sensorion. They're specifically made to be low power. The other sensor is an accelerometer, which uh, can detect rotation, fall, uh, impact, etc. Uh, and this is also specialized for low power devices, uh, and it's by ST Micro. So here on the front of the device, you see uh, a buzzer. And we added that buzzer because we saw that in the field, sometimes when a device is out of battery, but also when, for instance, it's lost or it's, it's being placed at a, uh, at a, in a position where you can't remember, a buzzer or audio feedback is, is very, very interesting. What you also see here is a quick connector, so you can use this for prototyping and make sure that you connect all kinds of different sensors. And we have all, also these breakout rig, rigs, which allow you, uh, allows you to uh, even more extend the device. On the back side again, there is the flash memory, and that allows you to store your firmware versions. So you can ship the generic node with all sorts of firmwares, and you can activate the firmware to use when the device is deployed in the field. And the flash memory is also used to store uh, incoming firmware updates. We also put the secure element on the generic node, and that means that all generic nodes are securely provisioned on the Things Join server. And this is a secure enclave that also performs the LoRaWAN cryptographic operations. And that makes it a really, really secure LoRaWAN device that not only works on the Things network, but on any LoRaWAN network. So going to the back again, um, we have put on here a bug boost uh, converter by Rico. And this is a state-of-the-art bug boost converter. And what it basically does, it squeezes every little bit 
of uh, energy out of any crappy battery. So uh, what it does is that through this component, it makes sure that the lifetime of this uh, device is even more extended. So it runs on uh, uh, two AA batteries, uh, and we chose that because there's a wide ecosystem of uh, AA batteries out there. You can get industrial ones, uh, you can, can get lithium ones, and you can get even a very cheap one from IKEA. Um, whatever suits your uh, use case, you can select the battery yourself. Woo. Oh, oh. <laughs> And finally, we have the casing from uh, Bopla. Uh, they have three different casings with the same internal, so also it gives you a flexibility on what kind of casing you want. And interesting, you can also select a, a ring, which makes it watertight. So this gives you a lot of diversity. Either you need the uh, water, uh, you need it be it water resistant or not. So what do you think, Johan? Is yeah, it exciting or what? Super exciting. Yeah. It's not as big as this one, though. No, 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 no. This it's, size. It's this this size or something. So that's good. So um, we've been working on this product for very long, having a lot of iterations. This has been uh, quite a journey to get it to the level where we want. And we also launched an. Uh, uh, a stealth community and gathered a lot of feedback because uh, we see this as an enablement for device makers. Um, so we want to get close to them and just know like, what do they really want in this boilerplate? How can we kickstart their device development? Uh, and we have uh, Luca from Ernas who, uh, who is part of that stealth community and he's, uh, he's going to tell you about uh, what he wants to do with it. Hi, it's been a year since I've seen you all last at the Things conference. Awesome to have you back. My name is Luka Mustafa from Institut Irnes in Slovenia, where over the past year we've been sitting at home and creating automated solutions and improving IT products we built so far, creating a range of partners and an ecosystem which allows us to build most advanced edge IoT devices to create novel solutions and create additional value in 2021. A very exciting project we've been working on and we decided to share this year is the Elephant Edge with a range of partners which you will hear plenty from uh, on this conference, we've been building the most advanced elephant tracker, which is designed to outlive the animal, but at the same time, bring in a lot of extra value from the sensors, from the machine learning side, and from the low power GPS tracking. We've put together a lot of technologies for this, uh, where we combine the greatest and the latest that's out in the field, things we've only heard for the first time about uh, a year ago. This now allows us to build very good end-to-end -end industrial IoT solutions. Let that be from the electrical grid, allowing us to monitor critical infrastructure, to detect problems in various industrial settings from power plants uh, to production processes. But even more importantly, we take this out to the built infrastructure, say tunnels, for example, where we use this also for sensing applications, but most importantly, even to control and monitor robots doing critical tasks and making this infrastructure better. Overall, we've seen also a need for a single purpose device, a very optimized and well-built solution which tackles a particular challenge. The things industries have been developing the generic node, which is a nice example of how to do this right. It's a well-built design which allows modifications, but the core is there and stable and is well proven. So on that basis, we've created a robust version of this so we can take the great existing solution and put it in a robust industrial product when that is needed. In this conference, welcome uh, to my keynote later on in the day, but also feel free to explore all of our partners and other uh, interesting projects that will be presented there and learn about what we've built and also suggest your ideas. Great, great, great to hear from, uh, from Luca, a long-term a partner from us. So, uh, so this is uh, about the generic node. We have one more thing: uh, is that um, we're also launching uh, uh, later this uh, this year the LR1110 version of the generic node using the same uh, um, uh, approach here as well. Here you see the the first uh, design coming. Uh, so if you want to know more, go to thegenericnode.com, go to the Things Industry stand, 
um, uh, and uh, we'll help you get uh, started.